So this is the Khan Academy for graphs of basic exponential functions. Um, the reality is an exponential graph has two parts. You have the part that's sort of all alone, and then you have the part that's being treated exponentially. So, so a lot of times we'll refer to this as A, and then this section here uh, we probably refer to as B. This would be the common ratio, by the way. It's the amount that goes up each time between terms if we're building it into a uh, sequence. But uh, with that being said, when we graph them, the two points they're looking for is A and some value of g sub x based on us substituting a value in. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that, uh, for instance, if this setup said negative 12 times 4 to the 0 power, which would be when x is 0. So we get rid of this term completely because 4 to the 0 power is just 1. So at negative 12, that's where we need to make that first, our initial point. Just like that. Um, another key feature of this one, that's not always a key feature, but it is in this case, is the fact that the initial number is negative. There's a role in how it looks, but before we even get to that, let's look at, okay, what would happen if we substituted some other stuff in? Negative 12 times 4, so we're going to do it to the first power. And negative 12 times 4 to the first power would be negative 48. This would be g sub 1, by the way. So in this graph, that doesn't really make any sense. There's no way in the world we're going to sit there and do that. So what we'll have to do instead is deal with negative exponents. That way we can make our other point. So even though we've set negative 12 here, we may end up sliding this back over here. It'll give you this sort of feel to it. You'll notice there's underside, and that's normal for something that's negative. So let's try negative 12 times 4 to the negative 1 power. Now, anytime you deal with 4 to the negative 1, you're dealing with 1 fourth. So negative 12 times 1 over 4 equals negative 12 over 4 equals 3. So this would be g sub negative 1. So I just substituted in the value, really. And then I get at negative 1, I need to go to uh, negative 3. This should be a negative 3, not a positive. I was being lazy. So go up to negative 3 here, and there you go. Perfect. So that's all you need to do for that part. Find the first, your initial term, and then just substitute some values in so you can find out where another point goes. And a lot of times it's not going to be easy uh, to just guess. Like 4 and 1 didn't work here. I mean, it, we don't try to enforce it is what I'm trying to say. Inside the system that they've given you, could you make a dot down here and think in your head, well, it's probably somewhere over in this direction, so I'll put a point right here. The system won't accept it. Find one that you can actually show. So in this one, it's the same thing, uh, similarly, anyway. I want to start with negative 6, so if, it, if they don't start at negative 6, I know that they're out. So A is out, B's still got some play in it, D's looking okay as far as that's concerned, and so is C. Uh, what you might remember from last time is that negative, the negative being here often meant that it was going down. So let's make, sh let's just do a quick test. So let's pick a number, uh, 2 or negative 2, it doesn't really matter. So negative 6 times 1 half to the second power. So this would be negative 6, uh, 1 half to the second power would be 1 fourth. So it's negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 over 2. So at 2, it should be at negative 3 over 2. So this one's looking better and better. This one's uh, even probably closer because this is negative 2 right here. So I'm going to say it's probably right in here. Uh, this one is a little, it's looking good in terms of it's closer than it would be over here where it's way down here at positive 2. Uh, so this one looks like it's out. 
So I'm going to say that the answer to this one is C. And if you want to try other ones, do it. Like, see it, look at it, and what happens when you do negative 2? So that one's right. So what it looked like before when we had that, well, it was going down and it was negative, so how come this one is going up? It depends on the relationship between not just the number, but also what happens when you, uh, what your common ratio is, is what I wanted to say. I almost lost my mind there. If the common ratio is a larger number, it means you'll start somewhere and continue to go up, or you'll start somewhere and continue to go down. If it is a fraction, it'll start to move towards just sort of leveling itself out at the axis. So if I'm here and the numbers, this is above, and the number is a fraction, it'll slowly start making its way down till it kind of almost hits zero. Same thing if I start underneath, it'll slowly start making its way up to this. And then you'll see the almost the reverse effect. So just be aware of that relationship. Let's see if there's any if the next one's novel enough to bother with. This one has some play to it. 27 is our initial starting point, so right there. And once again, just sub in any value that you want. Something in 1 here would make a lot of sense. 27 times 1 third to the first power. That would be 27 times 1 third. 27 thirds. 9. So my h sub 1, sub 1, a sub 1, 9. So I'm just going to look for a point on 1 that I can hit at 9. There it is. So nothing too serious, just keep working those systems and you should be able to get graphs of basic exponential functions on Khan Academy.